All U.S. topo maps are cast to the North American datum of 1983, also known as NAD 83, or to the World Geodetic System of 1984, also known as WGS 84. All maps are cast to the Universal Transverse Mercator Projection, also known as UTM, and overlaid with a 1,000 meter UTM grid and coordinate labels. The Fault Lauderdale North Quadrangle, which is within UTM Zone 17, appears on a secant transverse Mercator projection centered on 81 degrees west longitude. Each U.S. Topo Quadrangle extends 7.5 minutes in north-south and east-west directions along meridians and parallels. The central meridian of the quadrangle, which is not to be confused with the central meridian of the UTM projection zone, is set parallel to the left and right edges of the PDF image file. The map image itself, that is, the map interior, is enclosed with meridians and parallels. These bounding edges are called the projection line. The west and east edges of the projection line are almost, but not exactly, parallel to the left and right edges of the PDF image file. While U.S. topo maps are cast to the UTM projection, labels from other coordinate systems can also be found along the projection line. This presentation explains the different coordinate systems that are imposed on U.S. topo maps through tick marks and grid lines. The presentation starts with geographic coordinates, which are commonly used to describe a point location on or near the Earth's surface without the use of a map projection. Projected coordinate systems use a map projection and provide a convenient way to describe a point location in rectangular coordinates. The Universal Transverse Mercator Grid System, the U.S. National Grid, and the State Plane Coordinate System are found on U.S. topo maps and described in further detail. More details about the used coordinate systems with their underlying map projections that will be mentioned throughout this presentation can be found in two related RLOs on map projections which are listed here. The geographic coordinate system is indicated through latitude and longitude coordinate labels along the projection line. Full latitude and longitude values in degrees, minutes, seconds format are provided at the four corners of the map. The two and a half minute values are shown at every two and a half minute tick mark, as illustrated here for the Fault Lauderdale North quadrangle. Further, unlabeled tick marks are placed inside the map every two and a half minutes. The pattern of meridians and parallels on Earth is called the graticule. Tick marks and map corners therefore indicate the intersection of the graticule with the projection line. Longitude values are given in western longitude. This means that a location further west has a higher longitude value than one further east. If a location falls on the lines of latitude and longitude that are printed on the map, it is a simple matter to read off the coordinates. However, this process is more complicated if the location lies somewhere between the graticule lines. One must find the inch to second ratio which describes the number of seconds of latitude and longitude per inch measured on the map. This must be determined separate for latitude and longitude, but only once per quadrangle. When measuring 7.6 inches between two adjacent tick marks in latitude, this gives 20 seconds of latitude per inch, as shown to the right. The same approach gives 22 seconds of longitude per inch, as shown to the left. To obtain geographic coordinates for a point, one needs to identify a nearby line of latitude and longitude through tick marks, or the map corners, respectively. Then the distance from this reference grid line to the point of interest must be measured in inches using an engineer's scale or ruler, and then converted to seconds using the earlier established inch to second ratio. Finally, the computed seconds must be added or subtracted from latitude and longitude values of the chosen reference grid lines, which depends on the location of the point relative to the grid lines. As an example, let us determine the geographic coordinates of the southeast corner of the Atlantic Post Office in Coral Springs, Florida, which can be found on the Fort Lauderdale North Quadrangle. The northwest corners of the map are the closest reference to the latitude and longitude graticule. Therefore, the distances to the corner point measured parallel to the grid established by tick marks need to be measured. Regarding the latitude, a map distance of 2.28 inches is measured between the top edge of the projection line and the post office. After conversion to seconds using the inch to seconds ratio, this gives 46 seconds in latitude. This value needs to be subtracted from the 26 degree and 15 minutes northern latitude of the reference grid line, since the post office is located south of the used reference line. For the longitude coordinate, a map distance of 1.02 inches was measured from the left projection line to the post office, which translates to 22 seconds of longitude. 
Subtracting this value from 80 degrees 15 minutes gives the final western longitude. The reason for subtraction here is that the post office is located east of the used reference line. In the UTM grid system, the area between 84 degrees north and 80 degrees south employs a series of 60 longitudinal zones covering the whole world. These zones are numbered from 1 to 60 from west to east. Each zone is 6 degrees wide in longitude, with a few exceptions north of 56 degrees latitude. Each zone uses the transverse Mercator projection. Further, there are 20 latitudinal bands spanning the latitudes 80 degrees south to 84 degrees north, and denoted by the letters C to X, omitting the letters I and O. Each of these bands extends over 8 degrees in latitude, apart from band X, which extends over 12 degrees. U.S. topo maps include a 1,000 meter UTM grid drawn and labeled in conformance with the U.S. national grid standard. The 1,000 meter grid is aligned with the central meridian of the UTM zone and shown in orange. Full UTM easting and northing values are provided for the first grid lines in from the northwest and southeast corners of the projection. In this example, which shows part of the Fault Lauderdale North Quadrangle, the full UTM values for the northwest corner are shown. The westernmost north-south running grid line has an easting value of 575,000 meters, and the northernmost east-west running grid line has a northing value of 2,903,000 meters. Truncated UTM values are shown for the other grid lines. For truncated values, the 10,000 and 1,000 meter digits, which are known as the principal digits, are printed in large font, while the preceding UTM digits are printed in superscript type. For example, in the rightmost grid line label, 77 would denote the principal digits. To manually measure UTM point coordinates, the UTM grid is used. While there are several ways to determine UTM point coordinates, a simple method is illustrated which uses a paper strip. To determine the eastern coordinate of a point, find the nearest vertical UTM grid line, align a sheet of paper with that grid line, and mark the distance to the point on the paper. The ground distance of that distance is then found by checking the measurement against the meter scale bar on the bottom of the map where each subdivision to the left is 100 meters long. In this example, the distance from the grid line to the post office measures as 450 meters. Since the post office is located to the west of the selected reference grid line, one needs to subtract the measured distance from the easting label of the grid line, which gives an easting of 575,550 meters. For the northern coordinate, a paper strip can be used to mark the distance between the closest horizontal UTM grid line and the point of interest. The ground distance of that segment is then found again by checking the measurement against the meter scale. Since the post office is located north of the reference grid line used, one needs to add the measured distance to the northing label of the reference grid line. This results in a northing value of 2,902,200 meters. The final UTM coordinates of the post office should then be reported together with the UTM zone, which can be found in the mapping information of the U.S. topo map. The U.S. National Grid uses the same grid zone designations as the UTM grid system and consists of numbered 6-degree longitudinal zones and 8-degree latitudinal bands designated by a letter. This illustration, which is not cast on a UTM but a Lambert conformal conic projection, shows part of the U.S. National Grid index map. 6-degree by 8-degree grid zone designators, as highlighted through black arrows, are printed in blue. In addition to this, each grid zone designator is covered by a specific scheme of 100,000 meter squares that are measured from the central meridian of a UTM zone. A two-letter pair is used to identify each square. With increasing latitude, outer squares gradually become narrower. The majority of U.S. topo map quadrangles fall on one single 100,000 meter square. An example is the Gainesville East Quadrangle. A quadrangle may also fall on two or four different 100,000 meter squares. For example, the Fault Lauderdale North Quadrangle falls on two 100,000 meter squares, as indicated by the two square IDs shown in the U.S. National Grid reference box to the right. If the quadrangle is falling on multiple 100,000 meter zones, corresponding zone ID labels north and south of that zone boundary are printed along the projection line.
As shown here for the Fort Lauderdale North Quadrangle, the letter system uses letters NK for the 100,000 meters square north of a line located 2,900,000 meters north of the equator, while letters NJ are used to designate the 100,000 meters square south of that line. Locations within each 100,000 meters square are given as coordinate distances measured from the southwest corner. While the principal digits can be read from nearby vertical or horizontal grid lines, the remaining easting and northing coordinate distances must be measured or estimated, similar to how this was illustrated for the reading of UTM coordinates. The number of digits used in the grid coordinates depends on the precision that is required, where between 0 and 10 digits can be used. To describe the location of the post office, we provide here a full grid reference which consists of the grid zone designation, the 100,000 meters square designation, and the grid coordinates. The post office is located within grid zone 17R, as indicated by the blue portion of each grid reference. Further, it is located within the NK 100,000 meter square ID indicated in red. These zone designators are independent of the number of digits used for the grid coordinates. If no grid coordinates are given, as shown in the first row of the table, the described location simply lies somewhere within the designated 100,000 meters square. On the other extreme, a 10-digit number is the maximum, where 5 digits represent the easting coordinate and 5 digits represent the northern coordinate. This would indicate a location within a 1 meter square, as shown in the last line. For maps of scale 1 to 100,000 and larger, the numerical part is typically a 6-digit or 8-digit number. The state plane coordinate system is a rectangular coordinate system that is individually applied to each of the United States. Larger states are subdivided into zones where the zone covering the U.S. topo quadrangle map is indicated on the map collar. The quadrangle used in this example is located within the east zone of the Florida State Plain Coordinate System. U.S. topo maps show labels and tick marks of the State Plain Coordinate System in U.S. survey feet. Easting and northing values are provided for the first tick marks in from the northeast and southwest corners of the projection. Tick marks are placed on the projection line 5 inches apart, indicating the location of the 10,000-foot grid for the state plane coordinate zone. The readout of point coordinates follows the same principle as was introduced for UTM coordinates. Instead of using the orange UTM grid lines, one uses state plane coordinate tick marks as reference. To determine the point coordinates, one needs to find close-by tick marks on both sides of the map, which then establish the reference grid line for coordinate measurements. In this illustration, easting and northing labels for the tick marks close to the point of interest are shown. Connecting opposite tick marks provides the necessary reference lines for coordinate readout, indicated as dashed lines in this illustration. To determine the easting coordinate, first determine the easting of a nearby vertical state plane grid line, where in the case of the post office, the nearest grid line is found at 910,000 feet east. Then align a sheet of paper with the grid line and mark the distance between the reference line and the point on a sheet of paper. The ground distance of that measured distance is then found by checking the measurement against the feet scale bar, where each subdivision on the left is 200 feet long. In this example, the ground distance measures as 5,900 feet, which, after subtraction from the easting value of the grid line, gives an easting of 904,100 feet for the post office. The north coordinate is obtained in a similar manner. The distance between the post office and the nearby horizontal 690,000 foot grid line is measured as 2,700 feet. Adding the two values, since the post office is north of the grid line, gives a northing of 692,700 feet, and the final point coordinates can be reported. For quadrangles that fall into more than one state plane zone, tick marks are shown for each state plane zone grid with distinguished line symbols for each zone. This allows us to read point coordinates for grids associated with different zones. In this example, a west and a north zone grid are present on the map, where the west zone is visualized through solid tick marks and the north zone through dashed tick marks. On the map, the occurrence of multiple zone grids is reported within the zone information on the map collar. This map example highlights also the different tick mark symbols used on the projection line for the different state plane coordinate zones. U.S. topo maps are published as PDF files with a geospatial extension called GeoPDF. These GeoPDF files can be viewed in Adobe Acrobat Reader or Adobe Acrobat. 
U.S. topo maps can be freely downloaded from the USGS store, which is accessible through the USGS website. For full coordinate readout functionality from GeoPDF files, the Terrago toolbar is available. This is a plugin for either Adobe Acrobat Reader or Adobe Acrobat, which can be downloaded for free from the web. Once installed, the extended geospatial functions can be accessed either through the Terrago menu or the two Terrago toolbars. Coordinates for a point are shown in two different coordinate systems simultaneously at the bottom of the map. To change the coordinate system in which the coordinates of a point should be displayed, click into the left or right coordinate display field. This opens a dialog window which allows one to proceed to setting projection parameters. The coordinate selector window offers a wide selection of predefined map projections on different geodetic datums to choose from. This includes coordinate readout in UTM coordinates, state plane coordinates, the U.S. national grid, and geographic coordinates. Further, projections can be customized through a variety of parameters under the Custom tab. The Geo tool is particularly helpful for coordinate readout since it allows one to lock coordinates for a point after a mouse click. In this example, the mouse pointer was moved over the post office and coordinate readout settings in both readout panels were set to Florida State Plain Zone East and UTM Zone 17, respectively. The returned easting and northern coordinates are within meters from the manually obtained coordinates through tick marks and grid lines, which was demonstrated earlier.